So, welcome back to another episode of my Mini Cooper S restoration refurb. <laughs> Today, I'm going to attempt to fit new track rod ends, a new slave cylinder, bleed the clutch, or bleed that slave cylinder, and bleed the brakes. So, quite a lot to get through. Let's just get cracking. Let's start, shall we, with these track rod ends, or tie rod ends, whatever you want to call them. So I think really it's just a case of cracking this lock nut, undoing this nut, and then unscrewing the whole end, and then basically just making sure that you count the amount of times that you unscrew it, just so you don't completely screw your tracking up. I mean, I'm gonna have to get the tracking done anyway on this because I've had the whole suspension apart, so that's not really an issue, but I still don't want to get it too far out, you know. So you must just come in here, right, and crack this off. But how do you stop that from spinning? Oh, okay, so it goes like that. So what way do you turn it though? Left or right? So the thread's on there. So turn it the other way. <sighs> no. Okay, I don't make things easy for myself by not looking up in advance how to do things. I'd save myself a lot of time <laughs> and aggro. So I think you just need to get a 19 on here and another one on here. They should just come off easy. Nope. <sighs> Oh, God. <laughs> wow. I think I pulled a muscle in my back. <laughs> oh, that's my shin. <laughs> I probably used half a can of penetrant and more calories that I consumed today. But that nut is now off. So now what I've got to do is clamp the inside and then try and spin this whole tie rod end in. So I've just got a pair of these grips on here, which aren't very good. And then I'm gonna try and just spin this off. Oh, this is turning into one of those jobs where I'm asking myself, why did I even bother trying to do this? Those grips aren't on tight enough, but I can't get them on any tighter than that. This is turning into one of those disheartening jobs. I've been at this now for about 45 minutes. Trying to get the old pliers on there, lock it in, but you can see where I'm just kind of tearing up the metal. I'm tearing up the pliers. So you can't get a spanner on there. There's no spanner. Well, there's not really an edge for a spanner to even get on. So this is just completely seized on there, uh, which is a real pain. <laughs> I might go and buy a new pair of these, just like a bigger, more robust pair, because I think half the problem is I can't get a decent grip on this because they're so small. If that doesn't work, then I think we're just in, in the territory of cutting it all off, which I really, really, really don't want to do. Right, so I just went and purchased these bad boys, which is no small task because it means I've got to pack everything away just to go to the shop, but I've got them. You can see how much bigger they are than these things that I was trying to use. Because obviously these are bigger and you get more of a lever on them, I'm actually just going to be able to grip the tie rod a lot harder. Let's try with this, and then if they don't work with these, then I've got one more trick I can try before going the nuclear option and cutting the whole thing off. Okay, right, get on there, you pig. <laughs> Oh, damn it. Try a little bit tighter. Go on. No. Oh. No, doesn't want to know. Still just spinning, even in those grips. No matter how tight I try and get them. Oh, that's so annoying. I've already half destroyed them. Great. Okay, let's try a little bit of heat. So, what I did a week or so ago was I bought this 
little torch. Now I know it's only a culinary blowtorch. It's not a heavy duty industrial thing at all in the slightest. But I did read lots of reviews on it on Amazon and lots of people were using it for car parts and they said that in a pinch it actually works quite well and we are in a pinch. It's only butane so it doesn't get as hot as a lot of the other gases but this is my last option right now. Come on in you little turd, let's see if I can just heat you up enough. Just enough to get you loose, that's all I want. Just want to get you just hot enough, just to crack off, just a little bit. Not a thing, not a single thing. So close to getting all of this finished as well. Tie rod ends aren't supposed to be this seized, are they? <sighs> what if I was actually turning this the wrong way the whole time? <laughs> I really wouldn't be surprised if I were. I've got to try it the other way now. Now I've said that. <sighs> no, it's not that. I am telling you, there is no way that this is coming off there. I've now heated it. I've literally used half a can of penetrant. The trouble is with these grips now, is if I take them off, look, look what I'm doing to the inner track rod. I'm just chewing that up. You know what, I really wish that I'd have done all this when I had the subframe out with all the steering out as well. Would have made it a lot easier. Or well, maybe it wouldn't have done. Maybe it wouldn't have made it a lot easier at all, but it's pain in the ass. Hold on one minute, I've had an idea. <laughs> oh, this is stupid, but I'm up for trying anything right now. Oh my God, <laughs> that worked. I've taken half of that off. Okay, it's not pretty, but I don't think I've damaged the thread. <sighs> Now uh, you laughed at me when I pulled out that tiny little hacksaw. Come on, off you get. Okay, so I'm not sure how easy that is to see what I've done there, but I've cut off around there. So I've managed to remove, you know, a, a tasty piece of uh, metal. And you can see that's got a thread on it. This was the other half that I managed to cut off. And so if I show you on the new one, this is the same as this part here. So what I've really done is I've, I've chopped off right down to kind of that shoulder there so i'm wondering now if if that might be enough if i can get another grip of it it might actually spin off now come off now please come off oh you are kidding me what do i have to do to get this off i've taken half the bloody thing off these track rod ends are an actual joke i'm just gonna keep cutting if I just keep cutting, then there'll be nothing left and they'll have to come off, right? <laughs> and no, I don't have a grinder, otherwise I'd have done this with a grinder. <sighs> Lactic acid. <laughs> right, that's one blade down. <laughs> This whole thing has just been the worst idea I've ever had. Oh yes. So you can see I've managed to cut through this next chunk. I didn't really want to cut all the way down here because then I wouldn't have had much to put a spanner on. Oh my God, I'm gonna... Oh. How can this be happening? Trouble is, is that I'm just not really one for giving up. <laughs> and I also don't want to have to buy a grinder. <laughs> okay, well, today is the day that I give up then because that track rod end is not coming off. It is not coming off. I've cut half of it off. Still doesn't want to come off. I'm trying to smile through it, but I'm in the mood where I just want to smash everything up. And if I don't 
crack on with something else now the whole video is just going to be me dealing with that track rod end which i imagine is going to be boring we will come back to that in another video i've actually just bought two inner tie rods so we're going to do the whole thing and on the driver's side i had a look and it looks even more seized up than this side looks so i'm just going to cut both of them off and i'm just going to replace the whole thing i am actually going to give this another go so if you saw in my previous videos i was having a bit of a nightmare with this this cap here was basically leaking air now what i didn't realize someone in the comments mentioned apologies i've forgotten who it was that you get this thing in the box and i didn't realize that this is actually a spanner to kind of crank this down real hard so i'll give that a go okay and i have put fresh fluid in here so let's start over there in that corner the furthest away oh you know what i think that's done it was it ian was it ian that mentioned this it could have been Either way, I think that has now worked. So let's just crack this then and see if that actually starts to come through. Yes. Only a little bit though. That looked like it worked, to be honest with you. I wasn't really paying much attention and I actually took out way more um, brake fluid than I meant to. <laughs> I'm just gonna empty this into my do not use pot. my disc protectors have done very well i've had loads of rain but uh no rust <laughs> oh yeah here we go you see that do 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 and there is no bubbles in that maybe i'll bled these properly the first time around then because there's no air bubbles in this whatsoever i'm gonna go with yes i did it properly oh look at that couple of bubbles another one yeah there's a couple coming through this is working Crack that off, there we go. Any bubbles, any anything. There we go, look at that, lovely. Okay, so I just topped up the reservoir. So obviously when your bleed breaks, it's important that you don't actually let that run dry, otherwise you're gonna have to do it all again. But I didn't, luckily, <laughs> something's going right today. Now I will bleed the ABS and you bleed the ABS with a scan tool, but I'll do that in the next couple of days when I have to go through and try and get rid of all of the error lights that are on the dash. So I can definitely, definitely recommend one of these to people. This is absolutely fantastic. And we've got rain. Well, we've got drizzle, but it ain't good. It's not too much of an issue. I don't mind getting wet so much. I just don't want my tools to get wet. Anyway, we need to crack on with this slave cylinder now before it really does start coming down. And this time around, I have actually looked at instructions on how to do this. So this shouldn't be too bad, I hope. Right, so these are actually a little bit of a pain to bleed. So the idea with this is that you can only bleed this with the piston compressed all the way in because it's a load of air apparently gets caught up in this area here and you have to kind of tilt it up da, 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 da. but what you have to do right is you have to kind of fashion some kind of jig to keep this pushed all the way down all i've done i've got no idea if this is going to work so all i've done is popped a and q and i've picked up these uh mending plates i don't even know what a mending plate is and some large bolts and some nuts and so what i'm hoping i can do is kind of well look you'll see um psh, 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 psh. Ah. okay great what you could really do with three hands doing this Oh, the rain's kicking up. Ow, 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 ow. Okay, so this kind of thing, but just need to compress it all the way. 
that's actually worked really well. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to be as easy as that. Okay, pull that clip out. And then this should just come out, wiggle out. There we go. Okay, then loosen the clip. And there is no clip. Why is there no clip on that one? There's no clip. I imagine because someone's had this off before, haven't they? And they've messed around with it. Are oh, you going to come out for me nicely? No. Oh. Okay, I'll crack that off. Get my tray in place to catch the fluid. Move you back. Okay. It's gonna wipe all that brake fluid off. Okay, that's on. Now we've got to bleed it. So I've got the good old faithful power bleeder now hooked back up again. And just a little bit of plastic just to make sure I don't get any water in there. So now, so if I crack this bleed valve now, we should start to get some movement maybe. Anything, anyone? Oh yeah. Wow. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Can you see that? Oh, it caught me in the face. So then you're supposed to kind of tip it up and tap it. Oh, there we go. Trapped there. You see that? Okay, I'm just going to do that a couple more times. Okay, and then apparently you just let the pressure off. Okay, so I just let that pressure off and then a load of fluid back, back up the pipe, so I'm not sure what to make of that exactly. <laughs> and then top it off. It shouldn't be under pressure, so I can undo these bolts on this jig. And then if I've screwed this up at this point, if I've screwed up anywhere down the line, I'm gonna have to redo the whole process all over again. So <laughs> I can't, I really hope that I haven't. And I've got water going down my bum crack. <sighs> okay, lovely. Now I just need to do that back up then, put the bolts back in. And now for the moment of truth, what does the clutch pedal feel like? Please don't be soft. Please don't be soft. Please don't be soft. Oh, it's completely soft. <laughs> oh, now it doesn't even spring back. It's just stuck to the floor. Oh, great. Oh, marvelous. Oh, that's absolutely gutting, that is. So the pedal's just going all the way to the floor. It's not even springing back on its own accord. So it looks like I'm gonna have to do it all again. And I'm trying to work out where I went wrong because when I opened the bleed valve on the slave cylinder it, it was spluttering loads of air and then all the fluid came out and I did that a couple of times and it was all good. I'm wondering if when I released the pressure from the power bleeder and it drew a load of fluid back into the power bleeder, I'm wondering if the level dipped below the minimum in the actual brake reservoir and then that sucked a load of air in oh. so anyway if you could let me know what you think that might be in the comments where you think i went wrong i would be very grateful <sighs> oh hasn't been a good one has it messed up my tie rod ends and now i can't bleed the clutch see you in the next one